Welcome to Nancy Wilson's Femina Podcast. This audio is brought to you by Canon Press. Welcome to the Femina Podcast. This is Nancy Wilson, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today, I thought I would speak to you a little bit about good works, what they are, where they come from, and what they're for. So let's begin by looking at Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. First of all, we ourselves are God's good works. Think about that for a minute. We're his creation. We're his workmanship. And he created us in Christ Jesus. And what does this verse say that we're created in Christ Jesus for? For good works. And (laughs) we are created in Christ Jesus for good works that God has prepared in advance that we should walk in. And this is so exciting, really, if you think about it. That's what our purpose is. Good works. We're created for good works. In Titus 2.14, it says, He gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. And that zealousness, like we have been created in Christ, we are his own special people, and we're eager for good works. In 1 Timothy 6, Paul tells the rich to be rich in good works. So whatever our status, I mean, we have so much, don't we? And so we ought to be not just rich in our bank accounts and rich in our possessions, but rich in good works. And in 1 Timothy 5.10, the widows who the church will support, their qualifications include being well reported for good works, a good reputation for just good works. And I love the little list that follows that. It says, if she's brought up children, there's a good work for you, ladies. If she is lodged strangers, oh my goodness, I see so many Women in our community today opening their homes, their guest rooms, etc., for strangers, for people who are visiting, who are moving here, who are in between places. They are lodging strangers, people they've never met before. And I love that. That is a good work. And then it says, if she's washed the saints' feet, that means doing real humble acts of service, washing the saints' feet. You know, I don't have to wash anybody's feet today. They wash their own feet. But I do other things that I think are in that category, especially taking care of my father-in-law. There's just so many things he can't do. And your children, there's so many things they can't do, right? You may be caring for an elderly or sickly family member who has weaknesses, and that's washing the saint's feet. It's just being humble and taking care of people. If she's relieved the afflicted, any number of things there, helping people who are in affliction, encouraging them, ministering to them, cheering them on. And then if she's diligently followed every good work, just every good work, but we have that word diligently. Like when we wake up in the morning, we are to be zealous for the good works that God has prepared for us. We're to be known for them, well reported for them, diligently following them. So, which good works? Well, you know, the ones God has prepared. (laughs) And you might think, well, how do we know what they are? You know, how do we find them? Well, we're to walk in them. They are all over the place. Our path is strewn with the good works that God has put there in front of us. And our duty is to walk in them. We're to notice them. We're to ask God to open our eyes to see them. And I want to make just a note here. Notice. Good works are not just good, they're work. So bear that in mind, they're work. And there is no sin in being exhausted at the end of the day, you know? When we wake up in the morning, we can be confident. God has prepared a lot of good things for us to do. And, you know, most of us probably have a pretty good idea of what the basic layout is. We just simply move forward on the path he's laid out for us, and we do the things we've been doing knowing that he's prepared it for us. Just like we might prepare a good meal for our friends or family, 
God has prepared in advance good works for us. He's given it forethought. If I can speak that way about God, he's done it in advance. Before we get there, all the good works are already on our list, on our chart, on our calendar, in our daytimer, whatever. He knows us well, and he knows what he wants of us. And our good works are prepared specifically for us. They have our name on them in bold type. Yes, this one is especially for you. This is why our lives have purpose and meaning. God did not leave us without direction. He didn't prepare good works for us and then not give us the means to find them and walk in them. God doesn't play hide and seek with us, like see if you can find the good works. He's already prepared them, and he knows that we can just walk in them, and we will not only see them, but we're equipped to do them because he's given us his spirit to empower us to do all that he's called us to do. So he has created us for good works. Obviously, so many of our good works involve our words, and so many involve our hands and feet. You know, we use our bodies to do these good works, like in Romans 12, 1, where it says we present our bodies as living sacrifices unto God, holy and acceptable. This is our spiritual worship. Our bodies, we give to God, we submit to God and say, use me, Lord. Use me, Lord, to do all the good works that you have prepared for me. The most obvious kind of good works are the ones I've mentioned already, you know, taking care of people, feeding people, giving them a drink and so forth, taking in the strangers, just taking care of people, taking care of our homes. And really at the bottom, so many of these good works, if not all, are set in the framework of us being others-minded, focused on others. And imagine a life where every day you made a list of good works to do for yourself, and you just treated yourself as the sole benefactor of all of your work for the day. Sadly, we probably know people who live this way, and we see in the world a lot of teaching that we're supposed to live this way, to please ourselves and pamper ourselves. And so all the sacrifice that we would normally bestow on others, we're sacrificing for me. We're sacrificing our time for myself. We're sacrificing our money and investing ourselves in ourselves. It's like, oh my goodness, what a barren field that is to be plowing and and throwing seeds into. No. So many of our good works are in the category of domestic kindness where we're living for others. And I've encouraged single women in particular who want so much to have a home of their own. I've encouraged them to use their homes just as outreach and to make their homes places and oasis for others, even if they don't have a family yet of their own to care for. But there's this huge world of good works called hospitality. And whether it's your own family or you are reaching out to others and taking care of people older or younger, or cleaning and baking and washing clothes, etc. All of, so many of our good works are in the context of our home. If we're ministering to people, we're inviting them into our homes. That's our base of operations. It doesn't mean we don't extend ourselves beyond and exercise good deeds in our workplace. Those of you who are working outside the home, there's probably plenty of good works. Uh, that God's prepared for you to do there as well. But our homes have the potential for truckloads of all the daily good works that God has prepared for us. Good works are not an end in themselves. So you made a nice dinner for the family and you invited the neighbors, but the end isn't just a bunch of dirty dishes. The end is glory to God and thanksgiving. And the children and the neighbors who are growing and learning and being comforted and encouraged So our lives should be characterized by good works, and God gets all the praise. We don't parade our good works around and post them on social media. (laughs) But at the same time, Matthew 5, 16 says, Jesus says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. It's sort of like, remember when Dorcas Uh, died and people were so sad 
And it, in Acts 9.36, says, This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. So we are not doing the good works to advertise ourselves. We are doing them to glorify God. But when we do that, others see them. It's like a light shining. And God uses it to bring glory to himself, which is such a beautiful picture. And that's the end. It's not that the good deed itself is all there is. It brings glory to God. And so it in itself produces something beyond us, far beyond us. Just a word before I close. To some of you who may live by yourselves, maybe you can't even get out much, and you may feel like you're not in a position to really help the needy or you know, feed the hungry and so forth. But I think you can be confident that God has prepared good works for you. And he's prepared them in advance, wherever you are. So ask him to open your eyes and show you the good works that are available even to you to do. Even if you have handicaps that hold you back from doing what other women are able and free to do. Don't worry about it if your good works don't look like someone else's. That is not the point. God has prepared good works for you to walk in. And so be thankful for the ones he's given you to do and open your eyes in faith and do them to his glory. Thank you so much for listening. Blessings on your day.